Hi, my name is Shu Qihe. On behalf of our team at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University, the Visual Analytics and Collaborative Technologies Research Lab, under the supervision of Professor Ling Yingyu, I'm going to present our work titled Data Cubes in Hand, a design space of tangible cubes for visualizing 3D spatial temporal data in mixed reality. First, let's introduce the affordances of cubes. The concept of tangible user interfaces has been integral to the evolution of interaction design in immersive environments. Among different geometries, cubes are one of the most common tangible structures we encounter on a daily basis. They are three-dimensional in nature, which makes them suitable for direct interaction and manipulation of 3D data. They also have a familiar and natural mental model to users, as they are already embedded in everyday experiences, such as the Rubik's Cube. Additionally, they are modularly scalable, meaning that they can be stably stacked or combined to create constructive assemblies like Lego blocks without altering the fundamental structure. This sets cube apart from other geometries such as spheres or pyramids. The combination of these characteristics makes tangible cubes ideal interfaces for visualizing and manipulating 3D spatial temporal data. One such visualization concept that leverages cube's affordance is the space-time cube, or STC. It represents spatial temporal data within a 3D cube volume. It is used in numerous applications for visualizing data and facilitating understanding of complex patterns. More recently, the cube, space-time cube concept has been applied in tangible systems for visualizing and comparing temporal trends in mixed reality. Given the effectiveness of the space-time cube concept, it is imperative to propose using cubic tangibles as a compelling means to represent this type of data. However, there lacks a unifying framework of interaction outlining how cubes can be used to represent complex data like in a space-time cube. What are the design considerations for tangible cubes? How do we design cube-specific interactions? And how should we map interaction to visualizations? We attempt to answer these questions in this work by proposing a design space and investigating the size and multiplicity considerations, the interaction and visualization mappings, and finally presenting an integrated mixed reality prototype. Based on our review of prior works, we have identified several design considerations on the size and multiplicity of tangible cubes. For size, we found three main categories. Small cubes are around 5 cm or smaller. They are easy to handle and move around. Then, there are medium cubes, about the size of a Rubik's Cube. You can hold them in one hand, but you'll likely need the other hand to help manipulate them. Large cubes with edge length greater than 10 cm are meant to stay in place and observed stationarily. Multiplicity refers to the quantity of tangible cubes, employing either a single or multiple cubes. We discuss how the size and multiplicity of cubes affect our choices in interaction and visualization spaces and identified several design patterns. Small and medium-sized cubes can be used in multiplicity as they are relatively more portable. Large cubes, on the other hand, tend to be used in singularity because of size constraints. The size of a cube can also influence the choice of the optimal interaction space. Small and medium-sized cubes are often paired with orientation interactions. On the other hand, the larger surface area and immobile nature of the larger cubes make them ideal for surface-based interactions. As a result, a trade-off exists between ease of manipulation and the available surface area based on the cube size. The visualization space is also influenced by the size of the tangible cubes. For instance, medium-sized cubes often employ the overlay strategy, which maps visual information directly onto the surface of the cube, rendering sides of the cubes as display media. In contrast, the constrained surface area of small cubes makes them less suitable for overlay visualizations. Both medium and large cubes are observed to be used in the inside visualization approach, rendering information within the cube. Notably, medium-sized cubes demonstrate the greatest versatility as they span a wide range of design choices in the visualization space. This flexibility stems from their balanced size, which provides ample surface area and inner volume while maintaining ease of manipulation when designed carefully. Building upon these design considerations, we explore the relationship between the interaction space and visualization space by proposing a design space. Here, an interaction denotes the user's physical manipulation of the tangible cubes, whereas a visualization command refers to changing the visual information displayed in the visualization space. The design space aims to provide mappings between the two spaces. In order to formulate a user-informed design space, we conducted an ideation workshop. 
In our brainstorming session, we started by setting the scene with a data set that captures the health spending of nine countries Canada, USA, Japan, Bolivia, Russia, France, Egypt, China, and Australia. We mapped this data on a spatial base map. Imagine a structure where each column of cubes displays health expenditure data set for a different country over three distinct 10-year periods, stacking up to cover 30 years in total. We demonstrated how these data cubes can be physically manipulated to build various constructive structures. We invited 24 participants, including one lecturer, two PhD students, 19 master's students, and two undergraduate students. They were given specific data tasks and asked to brainstorm possible mappings by filling out what interaction actions they would like to use for achieving specific visualization commands. A total of 295 completed mappings were collected from the ideation workshop. After transcription, compound interactions were broken down and these mappings were parsed into 314 elemental statements. Two researchers then individually coded the elemental statements to form the finalized design space. The design space and visualization space are shown on the left, with the identified interactions shown on the right. The interaction and visualization dimensions are first divided into primary categories tailored to specific tasks and targets. For finer granularity, we further subdivided each of the primary categories into secondary categories, providing more detailed overview of interaction tasks. Here is a closer look at the design space, which relates the interaction space to the visualization space. The interaction space defines the ways users engage with tangible cubes. Broadly, this can be categorized into gestures and physical manipulations. The visualization space defines how visual information is presented, and it is divided into three categories based on the target of command, namely data transformation, visual transformation, and process control. For each interaction visualization pairing, multiple mapping combinations were listed. The frequency of a specific mapping is indicated by a color-coded square box. The number within the box represents the frequency it was proposed during the workshop. This design space can therefore act as a dictionary-like tool for creating and inspiring tangible cube visualization designs. We then proceed to demonstrate the pra practicality of implementing these interactions and further validate the identified pairings in the design space by creating a proof-of-concept prototype. We selected and implemented a small subset of interaction mappings for the spatial temporal use case, namely encoding, reconfiguring, filtering, and process controlling. Here is what the prototype interface looks like. It is divided into four functional components, tangible cubes serving as embodied data carriers, a map region providing spatial context, an interaction area for manipulating tangible cubes, and visualizations that adapt based on user interactions. We used a set of eight plastic cubes, each with an edge length of 3.3 centimeters and weight of approximately 15 grams. These cubes can be manipulated either individually or collectively as a group. The map region provides a spatial context for a data set. As users engage with the system, they encounter virtual cubes with dashed outlines that represent national health spending data. These cubes are positioned to the map to, the, to mirror their real world geographical locations. When users align the tangible cubes with their virtual counterparts, a connection is established and the data represented within the virtual cubes are embodied in the tangible cubes. The interaction region is where the users can actively engage with the tangible cubes. This region is located adjacent to the map region to allow easy transition. For our prototype, we employed bar charts with different structures and dynamics. There are two types of chart structures, neighbored and stacked. These are designed to reflect the combination of the tangible cubes. For example, when two tangible cubes are neighbored, the neighbored bar chart visuals will be displayed. Conversely, when two cubes are stacked, the stacked bar chart visuals will be displayed. In terms of dynamics of visualization styles, anchored visuals remain fixed behind the interaction area, providing a point of reference. On the other hand, the dynamic visuals appear on top of the tangible cubes and move in real time to the cube's movement and orientation. Our system therefore combines the immediacy of dynamic visuals with the clarity of anchored visuals. Here is a demonstration of how our system works. Neighboring the cubes side by side or stacking them on top of each other can combine the visualizations accordingly. The visuals can be combined in both the anchored and the dynamic views. Tapping recolors the cube and its associated visuals in the chart to achieve a highlighting effect.
covering occupies its associated visuals in the chart. Shaking can be used to reset a cube and erase its associated visuals. To evaluate the feasibility and performance of our design, we conducted a user study. We invited six participants to take part in the evaluation. Three of them were HCI or mixed reality experts, and the other three participants were intermediate users. They performed the same data tasks, including encode, reconfigure, filter, and process control, which were executed in varying sequ sequences. And throughout the process, they were encouraged to think aloud and verbalize their thoughts and observations. After all tasks are completed, an interview was conducted to uh, gauge their experience. The interview consisted of a mix of open-ended and specific questions. These are designed to provide a well-rounded understanding of the size and multiplicity of the cubes, as well as the effectiveness of the tangible interaction and visualization. Our evaluation showed that users appreciated working with tangible cube-based designs for data visualization. The cubes were generally the right size for easy handling, and participants agreed that having multiple cubes made comparing data much easier and more intuitive, as they could hold on to certain data points while exploring the others. The tangible aspect of the cubes made the interactions feel natural and direct. Participants mentioned that this physicality made the data exploration process more enjoyable and adding a layer of confidence in their interaction. We provided two, type of, uh, two types of visualizations as we explained. The participants noted that the dynamic ones were engaging, but sometimes made it hard to focus on specific data points, whereas the anchored ones were stable and clear, making it easier to digest detailed information. In essence, our, uh, our user study proved the feasibility of using tangible cube-based interactions from our design space while suggesting some areas of improvement. Here, we will now discuss and highlight the significance and potential utility of the design space for future designers. First, some design considerations. Our design outlines interaction for multiple small cubes that can form larger structures, which enables scalable and versatile data visualization strategies. Scaling up of um, the tangible cubes, however, introduces challenges like increased cognitive load and the suggested need for features that aid interactions without overwhelming users, such as color coding and clear labeling. Second, flexibility and customization. The design space serves as a flexible framework, encouraging prioritization and intuitive mappings so that it can meet diverse user needs. Third, material choices. With options like plastic, silicone, foam, and paper, different materials will offer distinct tactile feedback and influence the system affordability, durability, and manufacturability. There are also different implementation techniques to consider for tracking the position of the different tangible cubes. For example, optical tracking with computer vision or sensors, inertial tracking with IMUs, and wireless communication like RFID or NFC for information tracking and storage. Different techniques will offer specific benefits and challenges depending on the um, application scenario. Finally, to demonstrate the generalizability of the design space into different data contexts, we propose two additional data scenarios, namely demographic and weather data analysis. In the demographic analysis scenario, tangible cubes visualize population density changes over time, allowing users to compare regions or time periods and animate changes through interaction. In this case, each cube represents the population of a specific region over a period of time. In this example, we highlight how our design space extends beyond the initial prototype and can accommodate different spatial temporal scenarios. And the interactions are not confined to one type of visual representation, such as bar charts, and readily adapts to thematic maps and other visual forms. Designers have the freedom to select visual forms that best suit their research and analytical objectives. The second scenario is weather analysis. Each cube in this design represents the weather condition of a specified region over a week. This scenario demonstrates that more than one type of visualization can be incorporated to support the multi-layered exploration of data. This flexibility is especially valuable and can be generalized for exploring other spatial temporal data. Our journey through the design space of tangible cubes has provided valuable insights into the potential of such interfaces for data visualization. As we look forward, there are many opportunities to expand this work, exploring how tangible cubes can handle more complex data sets, experimenting with different cube materials, and integrating new tracking methods that are promising next steps. With continued research, the design space for tangible mixed reality cubes can lead to more intuitive and immersive user experiences. Thank you.